This problem involves finding the electric field in various places in a coaxial cable. Specifically for ours, we have a solid cylinder that is um, just ambiguously long that goes off in, uh, in both of the, the horizontal directions. And it has a, uh, a radius of A here. And that is surrounded by uh, essentially a cylindrical wrapper um, so in this, uh, it's actually kind of crowded. So in this space right here, in between the coaxial cable and this uh, cylindrical surface right here, it's just some empty space, right? And uh, the distance from the center to that cylindrical wrapper, that, that surface is actually B. So I'll go ahead and actually, let me just go ahead and put A right here from the, to be from the center all the way out. It's still kind of crowded. So this is A. And then this is uh, this is B right here. All right. So our goal is to find the electric field at various places within this uh, this coaxial cable. And one of the interesting things about this problem is uh, one of the things that we were given is that the the charge and the volume charge density is equal to rho for that um, cylindrical um, for that cylinder for the inside that solid cylinder that has a full volume. And um, it has a, a surface charge density for that outside portion right here that is uh, perfectly uh, equal, that perfectly cancels out all of the uh, electrical charge on the inside. So what happens, what that means is that if we, if we turn this into charge on right here, if we find the total charge inside that cylinder on the inside, it is equal and opposite to all the charge right here. The way we can get the charge from that side right there is just multiply it by A, where A is the area of this, uh, this cylindrical surface here. And then that, to make it equal and opposite, we just, uh, it's going to be the, mag the, negative, the magnitude of that surface area is going to be equal to the total charge on the inside. So that's what they mean by that. Okay, so let's get started. So our four, first section that we're going to try to find out where the electric field is, whereas A is uh, less than, or S is less than A, so this area here, so our Gaussian surface would look something like this, right, um, where we just take some sort of, uh, from a cylindrical Gaussian surface, uh, somewhere where the uh, the radius is in between um, zero and A right here, so we'll go ahead and start with that. So of course we can go ahead and use our um, our Gauss's law, where it is the surface integral of the electric field dotted with the area of our Gaussian surface. And since we know that the electric field is just going to be pointing away from the uh, from that surface, it's always going to be pointing in the s hat direction. And luckily, our surface charge or uh, Gaussian choice of Gaussian surface, the normal vector from the Gaussian surface is also pointing in the s hat direction. Uh, everything's going to dot out to be uh, just one, so this will end up just being a multiplication right here. And then for our for our charge enclosed, it's equal to the volume times the uh, times the total volume that's enclosed by that Gaussian surface. Since our Gaussian surface is uh, arbitrarily s, we'll just go ahead and write that as s. So here we go. For a cylinder is pi s squared, and then the length. Our length, so uh, it's going to be arbitrarily long, so we'll just put, put it as L. So if this is our Gaussian surface, this is going to be this length right here. It's just going to be L right here. And that's not going to matter because whenever we uh, do the, the surface area of the Gaussian surface, it's also going to be encompassed in L. So let's go ahead and do that now. So this just turns into an integral. The surface area of our Gaussian surface is just 2 pi s l, and this is where it cancels out. We'll go ahead and made our substitution right here, pi s squared l, and then finally our, our ratio factor 1 over epsilon naught. So let's go ahead and start canceling things out. We have our l's like I just talked about. This s drops away, our pi goes away. And then we're left with everything else. Let's go ahead and solve for the magnitude of the electric field here. 1 over 2 epsilon naught times rho s. And of course, um, 
we can go ahead and just turn this into the electric field, take away the magnitude sign since we know that the electric field points in the s hat direction, we can just do rho s s hat. And that is uh, our answer for from zero to s to find the electric field that is inside that cylinder right there. Now, our we can go ahead and start plotting this. We'll just do a quick plot right here, what we think. So if this is the uh, magnitude of the electric field, this is R. So basically our range goes from zero to eight right here. And if we only look at just the S, it's gonna be uh, a linear. It's just gonna be some glob of constants times S right here. So it's just gonna be a straight line all the way up to uh, with the slope of uh, just the constants and that was uh, defined by our electric field here. And so now we're gonna go move on to the next portion, which is gonna be in between um, S and B. What that means, right, graphically, is that we're just gonna have, a, we're trying to find the um, electric field in between the spherical shell and the, or sorry, the cylindrical shell and the cylinder that we have here, knowing that they have equal total, uh, equal and opposite total um, charges right here. So we'll go ahead and start to get work on that. Um, so we can just go ahead and start off with our um, Gaussian, Gaussian law right here, which is, of course, again, that surface interval. This will end up be turning into a dot. Q enclosed, one over epsilon naught. So again, looking at our Q enclosed, this is gonna be a little bit different this time. So our Q enclosed, of course, is gonna be the volume because when we look at it here, our Gaussian surface in between these two things, it's gonna to totally encompass the, uh, the that whole cylinder right here. But it's since it's uh, since the space in between these two, the, the spherical sh or the cylindrical shell and the cylinder that we have here within the coaxial cable is, is just uh, empty space. Um, it's not gonna encompass anything else once it goes from um, once it once it punches out from the cylinder until it reaches that uh, cylindrical shell right here. So instead of having an S for our Q enclosed, it's the total um, charge that's enclosed right here is actually just the uh, A squared, right? It encompasses all of that cylinder. But it doesn't change anything about our Gaussian surface. It's still arbitrarily S. So let's go ahead and start making those substitutions now. Okay, we'll go ahead and solve for our electric field magnitude. But first, let me go ahead and just cancel some of these things out. So we got pi, and then we got our L's that went away, our arbitrary L's, and here we go. So we still have a two epsilon naught. That's common in the last one. We also have a rho. Our a square survives because it's um, it only encompasses the constant a squared, and then we have our variable s. And of course, we can go one step further and solve for the direction, which is the, the full answer here, and just tacking on the, uh, whoops, that's no S squared, just tacking on the S hat right here. And that right there is our full answer for uh, the electric field in between this region right here. At any point between the, the empty space between the cylinder and the spherical, or the cylindrical shell. And if we look at a, a plot like that, it of course is going to drop off like uh, the only the only variable is going to drop off like one over s in between these two uh, in between those two limits. So if we have a and b this time, so let's go ahead and write these. It's just going to drop off like this, like one over s right there. Probably it could looks a little bit better. Drop off like one over s. You know what I mean. Now we have one more area that we need to find the electric field at. And that, of course, is uh, anywhere on the outside where S is uh, any, any point out here, right? Where S is greater than B, the uh, radius outside of the cylindrical shell. So of course, our electric field or our Gaussian surface is gonna be a giant 
cylinder that encompasses everything at some sort of arbitrary point s, where s, of course, is s is greater than b. So we'll go ahead and write this out. And so this is the interesting part right here. I'm just going to go ahead and write out our Gauss's law. It's always good to just start off with Gauss's law and not to try to go too quick with anything right now, because you can get a lot of insight just from starting from Gauss's law. So this doesn't change. Our uh, Gaussian surface is still a cylinder that perfectly dots with the electric field. And the surface is still a cylinder. So when they dot, it's going to be multiplication. This is a constant. It doesn't change. But here's the kicker, this Q enclosed. Remember what we said right here? Uh, right here, in this portion? Where the total charge of the cylinder is going to be equal and opposite from the total charge of the the cylindrical surface on the outside. So if they're perfectly equal and opposite, the total charge of the inside is equal to zero, right? So that means that our Q enclosed is equal to zero. So that means our electric field, of course, is equal to zero. So that's our answer for, the, for this last portion. Pretty easy to end that way. And the final last portion is to uh, stitch all of our plots together right here. Just make it a little bit more official looking this time. And this is R. And then, let's see, we'll go ahead and mark our really important area. So this is uh, A, this will be B, right? So in this area right here, from 0 to A, we already drew that. It was linear because it was uh, some glob of stuff times S. So it goes like, it just goes like a glob of constants times S. So. 0 to S is linear, or 0 to A is linear, thanks to S. And then in between A and B, it drops off like 1 over S. Here's the 1 over S. So now it drops off like 1 over S. And then once it hits B here, it just kills it off. It goes to 0, so it just drops down and just goes to 0. And that is the plot. And that, uh, that is a plot of the electric field for uh, this coaxial cable here.